In the name of Lord Jesus, I speak. <coughs> uh, we are going to continue to read uh, uh, Zephaniah, uh, the book of Zephaniah. And now we come to uh, chapter 2. Uh, the book of Zephaniah, uh, chapter 2. <coughs> Now, verse 1 to verse 3, uh, this section of the scriptures uh, basically talks about like the way of escape, if you like, okay? How a person uh, can be hidden in God in times of uh, the pouring out of God's uh, fury, all right? Now, I, th I think we can see this in, uh, in verse 2, all right? Now, before the decree is issued, all the day passes like shaft. Before the Lord's uh, fierce anger comes upon you, uh, before the day of the Lord's anger <coughs> uh, comes upon you. Now, so this is like a, a warning yeah, to the people of God, if you like, right? And to show them the way of escape. Uh, we know that uh, God's kindness and God's mercy uh, can be found uh, even in times of uh, judgment, in times of God's uh, fury. <coughs> now, so, uh, God, uh, through the mouth uh, of the prophet, uh, tells the people yeah, to, uh, to uh, walk on this path that he has shown them. All right? now, verse 3 is the way out <coughs> and how uh, a person yeah, can be kept uh, in the day of uh, his anger, all right. Now we look at verse three, uh, chapter two, verse three. Now seek the Lord, uh, O you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. <clears throat> uh, seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day yeah, of the Lord's uh, anger, all right. <clears throat> now I think the way uh, of escape is. Uh, is uh, to seek the, the Lord, all right? Now, I think the question is, what does it mean to, to seek the Lord? Now, I think sometimes, uh, like, uh, during services, right, or sermons, uh, we are told to seek the Lord. But how exactly uh, can we seek the Lord? What does it mean uh, to seek the Lord? Or what does it entail when we talk about seeking the Lord? All right, now, I think here it's quite clear. <coughs> uh, two things are mentioned. Okay. Now the first thing is seek righteousness. Right? And then the, the second is uh, seek humility. Right? The way of escape is clear. That is, uh, all the chosen people of God must build up a good relationship with uh, the Heavenly Father, with the Lord. All right? now, so to seek righteousness... <coughs> Now, indicates, you know, uh, whatever they do uh, must be deemed right in the eyes of God or must be in line yeah, with uh, uh, God's principle. Uh, so I think it applies to us as well. Uh, that is, in our life, whatever we do, we do not just consider, you know, the rightness of the things that we are going to do. We need to think about uh, whether it it is pleasing in God's eyes, all right, whatever we do, right, that is being uh, righteous. Now, so the principle of God must first upheld. Now, the second is <coughs> uh, seek humility. I think yesterday we did mention yeah, that, that uh, throughout the prophetic books, yeah, I think if you have read them, uh, you find that, you know, uh, the two major problems that plagued uh, the life of the believers of God you know, are idolatry and then the other one is um, uh, pride. Okay? Now, so <coughs> the way of escape here is to seek uh, humility. Right? Now, we can also turn to uh, the book of Amos. Yeah? Uh, chapter 5. Yeah. Uh, Amos chapter 5. Uh, 
Uh, we first read uh, verse 14, uh, and then verse 15, and then we're back to verse 4 and verse 5. Yeah? Right? We verse, uh, first read verse uh, 14. Now seek good <coughs> and not evil, that you may live, so the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. Now hate evil, uh, love good, establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord of hosts will be gracious uh, to the remnants of Joseph. Now, I think the book here, uh, one of the features of the book is about uh, the judgment of God uh, that would come upon the rich, uh, those who uh, were in power or in authority. And whatever they did, yeah, quite clearly was against the Lord because they oppressed the poor and they even sold the poor just for a pair of sandals, all right? And obviously that was uh, grave violations uh, against the commands of uh, loving others as yourself as stated in uh, the law of Moses in the book of Leviticus, all right? <coughs> now, so they were told to seek good and not evil. Uh, in this case here, they must establish justice in the gates, meaning whatever... Uh, 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 cases they presided over uh, must show, must reflect uh, uh, <coughs> righteousness and justice. All right. Uh, so that they were told to hate evil and love good. Uh, I think for our application today is you know what is not good we must hate, and what is good we must embrace. All right. I think this is the uh, mindset that we need to have. <coughs> okay. Now, I think when we talk about good and evil, it's not just about, uh, uh, you know, things of the world or whatever. I think in the context of the church, anything that, that leads you away from God, you must hate. Right? Now, I think for the past few years, we have been uh, facing these challenges, this challenge. Uh, false teachings are being infiltrated into the church. And you know that this will lead you away from God. So your attitude should be that you hate it. You, know, you cannot tolerate. And you cannot say, it's okay, we just take a look at it. It's not right. And you must hate it. Because you know that this thing is going to lead you away from God. Right? So you need to develop this kind of hatred in you against false teaching. Yeah? Okay. Now, chapter 5, you look at verse 4. <coughs> uh, verse 4. And verse 5. Yeah. Uh, verse 4 and verse 5. Uh, For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me. Again, here it talks about seeking God yeah. and live. Now, how should they seek the Lord here in this context in chapter 5? Now, verse 5 says, But do not seek battle, nor enter Gilgal. <coughs> now, pass over to Bathsheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity and battle shall come to nothing. All right. Okay. Well, you know, if you read uh, what is that? Uh, Genesis, yeah? uh, you find that all these places uh, initially were good places. Like Bethel is the place where God appeared to uh, to, who? Uh, to Jacob, yeah? Uh, to Jacob. Right, that's like the gates, you know, to heaven. Uh, it's, it was a good place. It was a good place before. But you know, as we uh, look at the history of the people yeah, down uh, the line, you find that this place has uh, become an idolatrous place. All right, and and this is same with Gilgal and Bathsheba. Bathsheba is a place where uh, Jacob, you know, offered uh, his sacrifices to God before he went down to uh, to Egypt. Yeah, to uh, to meet his son Joseph, all right. Uh, so quite clearly, we find that all these places were good before, and for whatever reasons, yeah. And now they became idolatrous. And so the writer, you know, the uh, what the prophet told the people not to go to all these places. But I think there are quite a few lessons that we can learn, all right. And the first one is, you know, what was good before does not guarantee that, you know, uh, it will be good forever. Yeah, all right? 
uh, just like these places that were good before and then they turn idolatrous. And also it tells us that, you know, uh, it is important you know, for us to um, detach, you know, our, our uh, emotion you know, from people who have turned evil. Okay? A person may be very good before, uh, was very God-fearing, whatever, you know. Uh, but you must not have anything to do with the person if he has turned evil. As simple as that. This is how you seek God. All right? Now, if you go to this person, it means that you are not seeking God at all. Or if you go to a, a, an organization, a group of people who, uh, put it this way, have deserted God altogether, have adopted a, another set of beliefs, if you join them, then you are not seeking God. As simple as that. All right? Now, seeking God uh, and tells us to, uh, to segregate ourselves uh, completely you know, from any form of evil that would affect us. Right? Now, we turn back to the book of uh, Zephaniah. <coughs> All right. We turn back to the book of Zephaniah. Uh, chapter 2, uh, Zephaniah chapter 2. Now from verse 4 onwards, uh, all the way to um, uh, to verse 15, yeah? and it's like here it talks about judgment on yeah, various nations. Right? <coughs> uh, it seems this is one of the, how can I put it, uh, one of the characteristics of the uh, prophetic books, yeah? Uh, in the Old Testament scriptures, uh, there are passages on you know judgment on foreign nations. Now, I, th I think I think the uh, the right way to study all these passages is that we should not first think that you know the judgment is on physical foreign nations. I don't doubt that. Okay, I don't doubt that. Sometimes it it does refers to judgment on physical foreign nations. I think more often than not, we find that this is like a, a message to God's people that because many of them behave like the foreigners. Right? Now, I want to uh, show you one or two examples. Uh, we turn to the book of Isaiah. <coughs> uh, we turn to the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 1. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 1 uh, We read um, verse 10 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 10 Now hear the word of the Lord you rulers of Sodom Give ear to the law of your God you people of Gomorrah I think as we all know the, the two cities of you know the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah had long been destroyed. Well, the people of God, yeah, the rulers of God, were like in God's eyes, the rulers of Sodom and people of Gomorrah, because they behaved like these people. That's why they were told. Right? I think the same idea yeah, runs on in the book. Right? Now, if you look at uh, chapter, chapter 3, uh, turn to chapter 3, uh, verse 9. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 9. Now, they look on their countenance, witnesses against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul, for they have brought evil upon themselves. Now, again, here it tells us that uh, their sin were like the sin of Sodom, yeah, because they behave like uh, the foreigners, right? Uh, so when we when we study, as far as I'm concerned, when you study passages on uh, judgment on foreign nations, yeah, probably you know uh, we need to have this idea or this direction in mind, right? Now uh, we come to chapter two now, uh, Zephaniah. Back to Zephaniah chapter two. Yeah, uh, there are so many uh, foreign nations uh, being mentioned. Uh, I think most of them, yeah, most of them, if not all, uh, most of them uh, were enemies of the chosen people of God. Yeah. 
uh, in the history of the children people of God, we find that they always what uh, you know fought against uh, or oppressed uh, the people of the Lord. Okay, now for uh, for the, today, I just want you to look at uh, uh, verse eight. Yeah, uh, verse eight uh, to uh, <coughs> verse eleven. <coughs> now, two two types of people are mentioned here: uh, the Moabites uh, and the Ammonites. Right? Uh, they uh, they were the what, descendant of Lot uh, with uh, his daughters. Yeah? We see this in the book of Genesis, right? Now, uh, I think we should not think that you. Know, uh, again, I said is the judgment only on the physical uh, Moabites or Ammonites. Yeah? I think uh, also uh, this uh, the book of Jeremiah uh, give a clear account of that. Right? Now we turn to Jeremiah as well. Uh, we turn to the book of Jeremiah. Uh, we look at, uh, for example, chapter uh, 49, right? So, the entire chapter, uh, I mean, uh, from verse 1, uh, sorry, chapter 48, yeah? From verse 1 uh, to verse 47, that is talking about the Moabites, right? Now, read 47 first. Uh, Yet I will bring back the captives of Moab, in the latter days, says the Lord. Now, I think it gives us an indication that, you know, uh, the prophetic message here is about uh, the end time, the latter times. Right? Uh, it's not uh, the uh, for the people uh, at that time when Jeremiah was talking, was prophesying. Right? So it points to the latter times. And some of the captives of Moab would be brought back to the Lord. So I think indicating to us that you know it's a prophecy right, about uh, how these people who behave like the Moabites uh, would be uh, brought back to the Lord in so far as they change their ways and they, rep uh, they repent yeah, of their sins. Now, if you look at chapter forty-eight, yeah, uh, you find that uh, these are the characteristics, the things that they did, yeah. and one of them is. You know, we. I want you to read uh, verse ten, yeah? forty-eight, verse ten. Well, there are many reasons. Yeah, we just we just read a few. Yeah. Now, curse is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully, according to my version. Those who, those who you know, do the work of God in deceit, yeah, not in, in honesty, not in truth, right? And you find that God would expose their their work. Right? Now, I think it's. It's, it's an important lesson for us to learn that whatever we do, yeah, we need to understand that God is there to examine. Yeah, God uh, knows exactly uh, how the work is done and uh, whether we have done it out of a heart of sincerity or we do the work in truth uh, and, and uh, uh, in good faith. Right? Now, so, find that here, this is a Moabite. Uh, serve God uh, uh, deceitfully. Now, the other one is, uh, I want you to read um, uh, verse 26. 26. Now, make him drunk because he exalted himself against the Lord. Moab shall wallow in his vomit and he shall also be in derisions. Right? Uh, so you find that these people are uh, exalted, have exalted against the Lord. Now, uh, to to go against the Lord obviously is to uh, go against his, his 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 law, his you know his principle, whatever is given to them, and uh, refuse to heed you know the the word of the prophets. Right? Uh, so they are to be to be judged as well. Now, we also read uh, verse twenty nine. <coughs> yeah, twenty nine of the same chapter. Yeah. Now we have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceedingly proud of his loftiness and arrogance, and pride and of the haughtiness of his heart. Now here again, it talks about pride, isn't it? Uh, so we have been saying uh, 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 this, yeah, that 
the major problem is pride. You find that there are many places this idea is scattered all over the uh, the pages of the scriptures, if you like. All right. So it's a it's a reminder, right, to us. Now, when you come to chapter forty nine, yeah, the first part, like uh, verse one to verse six, it talks about judgment on on Ammon, and again, yeah, the same conclusion uh, is given in verse six. But afterward, I will bring back the captives of the people of Ammon, yeah, says the Lord. So, indicating if if they would change themselves, then God would yeah would bring them back. All right. Now, uh, we come to chapter two now, Zephaniah. Uh, look at some of the uh, wrongs that have been done by these uh, two groups of people. All right. Uh, chapter two, verse eight. Uh, now, here it talks about the insults, right? Uh, the reproach and the insults of Moab and Ammon, uh, respectively. Yeah. And this uh, reproach and insult uh, were issued against uh, God's people. Right? They made arrogant threats against their borders. Right? Like they want to uh, conquer their land, you know, they want to... Uh, they want to destroy the people within. And I think if you look at this, uh, it's, it, it's beginning to happen in the church as well. It's beginning to happen in the church. Right? And you find that there were uh, threats, uh, being issues all over, you know, trying to scare the people within. Yeah. Uh, but we need to understand that the church belongs to God. And one day, you know, uh, when the time is right, you'll find that God will uh, do something about the situation. Right? Now, I want you to read uh, verse 10 as well. Uh, this day shall have for their pride because they have reproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of hosts. Right? Something that God would, uh, would, you know, would judge. Now, so I think it's important for us to understand to escape yeah, not only we need to do uh, <coughs> righteously, uh, not only we need to uh, uh, remain uh, humbly before God, and we must not, you know, uh, behave like the foreigners, right? Because all these foreigners, their their uh, their behaviors are not right in God's eyes, and God will judge, will uh, make them, you know, accountable uh, for uh, their deeds. Right? So. Uh, in this chapter, you find that to escape God's judgment require us to take these two steps. First, be right with God. Yeah? Righteousness and humility we must seek. Right? And the other thing is, we must not behave like the foreigners yeah? who we'll always go against the church of God. Okay? Uh, we shall continue to, uh, uh, tomorrow. Okay? Now we are going to pray. Um, again, again, those who have special needs, come forward. They pray.